study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com let's go back to Pretty much what I'm getting for those who are unfaithful, you know, this talks about the unfaithful city, but if we are unfaithful to him, there's going to be a whole lot to bear burden on us if we don't come back and repent for our unrighteousness, our sins. Um, it's not going to look good. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting out of what I just read from uh, whatever it's First, that was. Okay. Let's do some cross referencing on verse 21 stands out to me. Yeah, 21. You just, you just mentioned it. Yep. How the faithful city has become a prostitute. Listen to the poetic language here. And now, don't forget, this is Yahuwah speaking, right? Through Isaiah, right? In verse 19, it says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of Yahuwah has spoken it. How the faithful city has become a prostitute. She was full of justice, righteousness, lodged in her, own, in her but now murderers. He relates the city. What city are we talking about here? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. I agree. Jerusalem is the heart of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. And when Yahuwah is speaking about this city, is he talking about the pavement, the stones, mm -hmm. the, the dishes, the plants, and the structure? No. Talking about the people. He's, at, he's talking about the people. Yeah. It also reminds me of like verse 23 reminds me even here in America today, which I'm sure it's all, you know, even in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. there's loving the bribes, thieves, you know, those who are in power. Yes. They're very, they're very wicked. They're very uh, corrupt. Yep. But I want to dig into this verse here. Verse uh, 12. Uh, what is it? 21. <laughs> I want to yeah. dig into verse 21, him talking about how the faithful city has become a prostitute. Yeah. I want to dig into this a little bit more. So I'm choosing to use the TSK. I got like eight references here. We'll see which ones are good. The first one I have here is Isaiah chapter 48, verse 2. And I'm going to start in verse 1. Isaiah 48, verse 1 and 2. It says this. Hear this, house of Jacob, or a.k.a. house of Israel. You who are called by the name of Israel and have come forth out of the waters of Judah, who swear by the name of Yahuwah and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth nor in righteousness. Didn't we just talk about that a few seconds ago about Paul saying that the Israelites did not attain the righteousness of the law, but the Gentiles did, even though that they were pursuing the righteousness of the law? Here's another example of that. Who swear by the name of Yahuwah and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in the truth. We have a form of godliness and appearance. Verse 2, for they call themselves of the holy city and stay themselves on the God of Israel, Yahuwah of hosts is his name. 
All right, so here is a cross-reference. Verse 2 is a cross-reference, kind of showing the, how should I say this? What is the connection between the metaphorical language between the city and the people? There's some type of connection. When, when the prophets speak of the city, they're actually speaking of the people. That's what basically I believe these cross-references cross will help us see. About Psalms 46.4. Yeah, let's do that. Can we read it? Go ahead. The flowings of the river gladden the city of Elohim. The Most High has sanctified his tabernacle. Now, I'll get what I think of that. The flowings of the river, like the flowings of everything prospering in the city, the righteousness of the city, the people, gladdens Yahuwah, and it sanctifies his holy temple, you know, his tabernacle. Mm-hmm. That's what I get out of it. Yeah, that's good. Another cross-reference is Psalm 48.1. It says, Great is Yahuwah and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his holy mountain. Beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. So it's not just the beauty of Jerusalem, of Israel. Mm -hmm. It says that Zion or Jerusalem, the holy city, is the joy of the whole earth. The city of the great king. God has shown himself in her, I don't know this word, citadels, citadels, I don't know, as a refuge. Citadels, citadels. Yeah, that's Citadel. a word I don't use in my vocabulary. <laughs> what else do we have here? Uh, verse 8, if you go further down on chapter 48 of Psalms, it says, As we have heard, so we have seen, in the city of Yahuwah of hosts, in the city of our God, God will establish it forever. Hosea, ooh, yeah. this should be good. Yeah, that's a good one. Hosea chapter eleven, verse twelve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, now we, now we, now it's more like it. This is what I want to see right here. It says, "Let's start at verse." We see Yahoo is talking about people in this whole chapter. Let's read the whole chapter. It's only uh, it's only twelve verses. Let's read the whole chapter. Hosea chapter 11. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. As I called them, the farther they went from me, they sacrificed to the Baals and burned incense to engraved images. Yet I taught Ephraim to walk. I took them in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I drew them with cords of a man, with ties of love, and I was to them like those who lift up the yoke on their necks, and I bent down to him, and I fed him. Quote, they won't return into the land of Egypt, but the Assyrian will be their king because they refuse to repent. That word repentance is key. You want to endure in this walk? Mm -hmm. Practice repentance when you need to. Verse 6, the sword will fall on their cities and will destroy the bars of their gates and will put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me. Though they call to the Most High, he certainly will not exalt them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? Ephraim is a nickname for the northern kingdom of Israel, which that's is funny that it's finally that's funny it's finally used, but in Septuagint it starts off like that. Ephraim talking about Ephraim. All right, all right. So how can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I make you like Adma? I'm not sure what that means. I'm not gonna look into it right now. Adama. Yeah, Adama. How can I make you like Zeboim? My heart is turned within me. 
My compassion is aroused. I will not execute the fierceness of my wrath, meaning I'm not going to execute the worst part of my wrath. I will not return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in the midst of you, and I will not come in wrath. They will walk after Yahuwah, who will roar like a lion, for he will roar, and the children will come trembling from the west. They will come trembling like a bird out of Egypt and like a dove out of the land of Assyria, meaning Israel's going to come out of captivity. Sometime in the future, Israel's going to be rescued out of slavery and bondage. And I will settle them in their houses, says Yahuwah. Ephraim surrounds me with falsehood and the house of Israel with deceit. Judah still strays from God and is unfaithful to the Holy One. So you see in this chapter that Yahuwah is relating the terminology of a city, a geographical location, but he's not necessarily talking about the actual geographical location or the actual construction. He's talking about the people. His whole point of using this language is to address that the people are the ones that are in covenant with him. Derail? Uh, for Adama, it's uh, H126. It's earthly place okay near the dead sea okay thank you so, do you have any revelation on that what that i where i gotta find out what happened there okay i don't know what happened something happened appreciate that mm -hmm.